Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. Please keep in mind that these gen readings are general, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid, so just because this is dated for the 20th of November, it doesn't absolutely have to resonate on the 20th, it can resonate at any moment, at any time for you, yes? Depending on your own personal journey. Also keep in mind that these readings are not meant to be specific towards anything. Not sign, not love, not career, not anything. This is just whatever spirit would like to discuss with us today, yeah? So, today, this is the day that we've all been waiting for, everyone. Today, Mercury goes direct. Thank God. However, we're not out of the woods yet because we do have the shadow period that we'll have to deal with for about two weeks. Um, and it's interesting because Betsy of Fearless Intuition, in her daily reading yesterday, she mentioned how, um, you know, some people are affected by the, the, uh, the shadow period more than the actual retrograde. I mean, for me personally, I'll just be happy... <laughs> that we're out of the main retrograde like i'll take the shadow period if that means that that mercury goes is going direct for a while because <laughs> let me tell you this past re retrograde has been really interesting for me it was really really a really rough run rough one however there is for me personally there is a silver lining because I ended up reconnecting with a very, very dear friend. Like, literally, if I had... Good golly. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I don't know if you guys heard that, but there are some police moving through, and traffic is not letting them, and they're making a big old ruckus. <sighs> okay, well, anyway. Um, so what I was saying was... I connected with like a, a dear, dear friend. If if there is anybody in my life that I could call a best friend, <laughs> if there's anybody in my life that I could call a best friend, it was this person. Good golly, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know if you're hearing that, but it's really distracting. Anyway, we reconnected during the Mercury retrograde. True, very, and I I said to her, I said to her, how how very Mercury retrograde of you. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the silver lining for me. I mean, I guess that was a reward for all of the the stuff I dealt with. But hey, it's okay. It's okay. We were all going through it. All right. So let's get into the pre-shuffle energies here. Um, I'm still seeing yellow for the collective right now. Um, and it's like, it's almost as if you're gearing up. It's like I'm feeling, it's this, well... The way I'm I'm picking it up, the way I'm perceiving this yellow energy, it's like you've powered up the system, or you've you've pressed the power button on your system, and now it's in the process of powering up, right? So, it like if say it was you just started a computer or something, well, it's booting up right now. Um, I feel like there is momentum being generated. You may be even in the process of putting a plan of action together. Let us let me show you what we have here. We have the chariot, we have the wheel of fortune, and we have the seven of wands. Now, the wheel of fortune is a really important energy in this situation here that we're talking about because the wheel of fortune, especially with it being this side of the card, again, for those of you that are not aware, this is the vice versa deck, okay? But for this side of the card, it is a symbolizing just going with the flow. Um, let me actually, I want to, I, I want to show you or tell you guys who these figures are on this card because I feel like it's really important at the moment. But um, so in the book of this deck, they say. Under a pitiless desert sky, a sphinx rests her paw upon the wheel of fortune. The wheel is carved with sacred and esoteric symbols that speak 
of the great mysteries of life, death, and rebirth. Two Egyptian gods stand beside the wheel, the snake-headed Typhon, who brings chaos and destruction, and the jackal-headed Anubis, who accompanies the dead into the afterlife and beyond. Both are in Greek dress and have human bodies, denoting a union with the god Hermes, who is also the guide of also a guide of souls. Hermes adds, dis Hermes adds discernment and intelligence to the powers of Typhon and Anubis so that as our lives turn upon the wheel, we gain wisdom with each turn. Okay, so th to, to what this is basically saying here is at this point, at this point, you're kind of you're kind of just like holding your defenses. You're keeping yourself in balance, in check, and, and and grounded, or at least you're doing the best that you can, okay, to stay grounded, stay in check, and all that. There's a strong sense of boundaries here, and I really feel like you're very much holding your boundaries. You're, those boundaries are very important because they what they're. It, it's it's basically a culmination of everything that you've learned up until this point. Excuse me, guys. I think I'm going to sneeze. Mm. Hold on just a moment. Ooh, sorry about that. I I wanted to make sure that I wasn't sneezing in like your face or so, or in your ear because you know this microphone is is pretty intense lately. <laughs> okay. Anyway, getting back to it. These defenses that are represented here by the 7 of wands, it's it's a culmination of everything that you've learned up until this point, okay? It's the boundaries that you've put in place. Um, and whatnot. And so with the chariot here, it's like you're, you're, you're focused, you're ready to go whenever the moment strikes. And then the wheel of fortune is speaking to how you're just kind of like rolling. I, I guess you, I want to say rolling with the punches to, at this point. Um, you know, you're going with the flow. You're allowing the universe to take you. You're allowing the universe to guide you. You're, you're, you're either doing it or you're doing your best to, um, work in tandem with the universe instead of working against it. Yes, overall energy, you do have the Nine of Cups with the Seven of Pentacles at the other side. So it's it, 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 there's an energy of in spite of what it is you've experienced in the past, in spite of maybe some harvests that you have experienced, um, or that you've come upon lately that may not have that may have been less than desirable. I mean, look at this guy's face. He doesn't look too happy about what he sees on the, growing on that tree, right? So, in spite of all that, um, I feel like you have learned your lesson, or you're coming to terms with it, and you're working on building something new. There is a strong sense of differing of opinion, though. That's for sure, and that could be within the counterparts. But, hey, you know what I say about opinions. <laughs> anyway, I have my No Drama Llama today. It's a wonderful, wonderful mug that I got from Sam, one of our viewers. Hi, Sam. Um, I do have to say, though, this, 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 mug, this mug is a lot bigger than it may look. Okay, it may not translate so well on, on camera. Let me tell you, though. This mug holds an ungodly amount of coffee, and I love it. <laughs> like, it literally, it literally, like, with the, with the pot of coffee, the coffee maker that I have, I make, I fill it, the water up to, like, what is what it says is eight cups. But normally, that's about three cups for me, right? And I drink all of it. With this thing, this holds half of that. <laughs> Oh boy. That's right. An ungodly amount of coffee. And I love every moment of it. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's get into the rest of the reading here for you, yeah? Oh, actually, let me give this one shuffle. I do want to say 
that as I finished that shuffle, we landed with the Nine of Cups back on top of the deck and the Ten of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. So there is definitely some sort of wish fulfillment that's coming. A wish is going to be granted in terms of some sort of family, longevity, stability, and whatnot, whatever. You just have to keep going, okay? All right, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, our hump day, November 20th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. All right, guys. I'm gonna give this three shuffles. Um, but I also I want to say that I forgot to mention that we do have happy hour tonight. It is Wednesday, so we are doing happy hour. All right. Uh, ten spaces, single question readings, twenty five dollars. You can send payment to paypal.me slash divine conversations. Make sure to put the your question in the notes section of your payment to help streamline the situation. Yeah. Cool. Three shuffles for our Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. For the collective, Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. What would you like to discuss with us today, Spirit? Let's see what we've got for today. Here we go. Wednesday, November 20th. Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. Um, I do want to say that Aluna Ash put out an energy, an update yesterday. I know some cards have fell. We're going to do another read, another pull. Um, and she did mention that we do have solar flares coming in within the next few days. I was definitely picking up on that. Also, the last two days, my dreams have been pretty, like I've been dreaming again. The dream I had this morning is a little topic of contention, but we're not gonna go there. But yes, there are solar flares coming, kids. Be ready. Okay, all right. All right, cool. We're gonna stop here, wow, okay. Over, oh Lord, overall energy, we have the hanged man and we have the hermit. Boy, oh boy. Okay, we have the lovers and the emperor in reverse. We have justice, we have the nine of wands, we also have the ten of swords, and then we have the nine of cups again and the queen of pentacles. Okay, so. Um. I feel like there's a bit of a coming to Jesus moment, for lack of a better term, for somebody here. Um, and we are non-denominational here, so don't worry about that. I'm not, we're not religious. I'm. It's just that's again, for lack of a better term, it feels like there is a bit of a coming coming to Jesus moment here. Um. I'm hearing reconciling. I, I kind of feel like, and it's and it's very interesting that this is coming out because this kind of resonates with the dream that I had um, that does, in fact, involve this person that I considered or I'm, I'm under the impression is my twin. I haven't dreamt about him in a long, in a few months. Um, and... Um, I mean, in the dream, he, I just, I noticed for like a split second that he was standing next to me and then I woke up and it, it pulled up all kinds of stuff. But what I'm hearing here is that masculine energies, certain ones that have been in a really, okay, what I'm hearing is certain, certain masculine entities that have been in a really tragic situation that um, may have been really incredibly abusive as a child or um, twisted and narcissistic, whatever, whatever elements 
from life that have led you or led this individual to be in an extreme energy of selfishness, egotism, narcissism, whatnot, whatever. You're going through a clearing process. You're going through a healing process. There's a little bit of a come to Jesus moment here. There's a little bit of a, there's a lot of it <laughs> of a wake up call happening with this justice. I'm sorry, not justice, judgment, nine of wands, 10 of swords. Okay. Um, it, in this situation, it's almost as if it's almost as if the masculine has been kicked out. <laughs> this is not by the divine. <laughs> this is by the counterpart. And I apologize. I'm not trying to like laugh at you. Um, I just didn't, I didn't know how else to put it other than it's like you've been kicked out. Now, please don't, please understand that spirit, the universe, your guides, your angels, whatnot, whatever, those that are on your, well, those that are, are helping you on the other side, they haven't rejected you. They haven't kicked, your, kicked you out. It's been your counterpart that's kicked you out. And we have her right here with the Queen of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups. We'll get to that in a second. But for you, masculine, there's a lot that you need to come to terms with. And to be quite I, I, um, I just heard, I heard very subtly, and I almost missed it, but it still, it still came through. I heard, get over it. I don't know who that's for. Okay. It might be for the feminine. It could be for the feminine. Um, and that actually might have been you, masculine, coming forward and being a little snippy or whatnot. Um, Okay, but it also could be a message for you, masculine, that there's something that you have got to get over. There is, it's like this is, this feels like a kick in the pants for you between judgment, the nine of wands and the ten of swords. It's like you've been, you've been persevering, you've been fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and resisting letting go of certain elements from your past, from your life, whatnot, whatever, that are keeping you in this overly narcissistic energy the emperor in reverse with the lovers in reverse and it look the lovers has two sides of it just like the rest of this deck on one side you have the angel between you on the other side it's just the two of you and it's just the two of you that's on this side of the card right now that's showing it's <laughs> the universe hasn't kicked you out of this union your your counterpart has kicked you out because of toxicity because of narcissism because of an overly controlling mindset control issues power issues but that all stems from your childhood and that there's no card to say that i'm picking up on it that's what the energy feels like that's the message that i'm getting here and you have to be the one to put this to rest you have to do it yourself your counterpart can't do it for you it is not it is not her business and I'm saying her because it's the feminine here. The feminine could be a man. It could also be a woman. We're not talking gender. We're talking energy. All right? Your feminine has nothing to do with the past that has helped to shape you into who you are today. She dealt with her own past and probably, and for the most part, probably still is dealing with certain elements of her own past that shaped her into the person that she found herself to be, but she's absolutely doing the work to pull herself out of that. And that is why she is here. Queen of Pentacles, Nine of Cups. And that is also why she has turned her back on you. Because she knows her worth. She recognizes who she is. She recognizes her struggle. She also recognizes what you two have been through in this situation. It's not like she doesn't love you, but at the same time, it's like, look, buddy, I can't have this energy in my life. I can't have this toxicity and this narcissism in my life. It's, it's, it's destructive to you. It was destructive to me. And I have actively done so much to get myself to where I am now. There is no way you are going to pull me down again. 
I'm not going to let you, I refuse to let you and anyone else pull me down. This is what the Queen of Pentacles is saying. And this is why the Queen of Pentacles is facing wish fulfillment no matter who it comes from. Because she's standing in her power. She's holding her integrity. She's holding her worth. Okay. Overall energy of the hanged man with the hermit. You could be dealing with a Virgo. I don't know. I mean, you could be dealing with a Gemini also. I don't know why that is so important to say, but you could also be dealing with an Aries. You could be dealing with a Capricorn, an Earth, an Earth sign. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, I felt compelled to say you could be dealing with a Virgo with this hermit card. Take it as it resonates. It's a general reading, but look at here. You see this side of the hanged man? This is the side of the hanged man in which we have the two individuals that were indoctrinated by the Hierophant saying to themselves or coming to a place, well, coming to, this is a coming to Jesus moment for them too, because they're coming to a place where it's like, oh my God, there is another way to look at this. I've been deceived. I've been lied to, says these two. There is a different perspective to acquire. There are many there are infinite, infinite ways of seeing something. There are infinite perspectives. But coming out of the fact, or coming out of the, the belief that there is only one way of seeing things, there's only one way of doing things, there's only one sense of reality, blah, blah, blah. That is what needs to change here. And then we go to the hermit, where you go through some sort of self Discovery, introspection. You find your own inner light. You find your own truth. You walk your own path. You're not following. In a sense, you're leading. But the hermit, the hermit energy in its truest form isn't necessarily trying to lead anybody anywhere. The hermit is following their own path. If you choose to follow them, cool. But that's your choice. The hermit's not out here advertising to be some sort of leader. But if you choose to follow him or her, by all means, go right ahead. The hermit walks a solitary path. The hermit walks, oh, the path of least resistance, which is the path, which is the path of greatest resonance for them as an individual. Okay. <sighs> hmm. Coffee. <laughs> All right. Um, let's start clarifying a little bit. I do want to go to the Golden Universal Tarot, but we'll do that afterwards. I want to get a little bit of a greater understanding of these energies here. So I'm going to start with this. The Emperor in Reverse with the lovers in reverse and then you have the nine of wands judgment and the ten of swords please excuse the sniffles um i'm using the wild unknown tarot i keep yeah this is definitely a come to jesus moment for somebody and i'm hearing it has to do with facing the past it's most likely the masculine counterpart here since today we are talking about counterparts again um but it could also you could also see this as you know coming a reckoning or coming to terms with the masculine energy within you okay but i do feel like this is mostly for masculine counterparts whatever <laughs> take it as it resonates guys you know what i mean just place it where it fits for you if it fits for you if it doesn't fit for you then don't worry about it okay one last shuffle here and then i just want to get some greater definition of what these energies are here for this masculine energy. Let's look a little deeper into this for you, masculines. Okay. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Overall, okay, we have the Ten of Pentacles here. Uh, potential for a lesson learned. You have the chariot with the seven of swords and the ten of cups. 
interesting. Okay, um, I'm going to full disclosure. I am working very hard to keep my ego <laughs> out of this because I don't like seeing, I, I don't like seeing the Seven of Swords here. I'm not saying that anyone's being deceptive. I'm not saying anybody's, well, excuse me. That's not true. There is deception here. But the deception is someone is just not letting it be known of what they're doing or how they're changing or how they're moving. Okay. So what's happening here is this masculine energy is going through some sort of change, realignment in a discreet manner. That is fine. You have every right to do that. I just, I guess I'm personally getting a little triggered by this because it's like, I don't even know what it's like. What it is though, is somebody is coming into alignment. The chariot. The Ten of Cups with the Seven of Swords in between. It just, there's something, there is something about this that is really bothering me. And I'm doing, <laughs> I swear to you guys, I'm doing my best to not, to, to look at this from an objective point of view, but it's just like, it, what it feels like here is somebody is keeping this a secret. Somebody is continuing to keep this a secret is continuing to keep their desires, is, continued to keep being, is continuing to keep the momentum, the movements that they're making, blah, blah, blah. They're continuing to keep it a secret. Now, there could, be a very, there, there could be a very good reason as to why they're keeping this a secret. There could very well be. Maybe there is a, maybe there is a ton of people around you, toxic people around you that just want to hold you, hold you back and whatnot, whatever. But this still feels... This, this, something doesn't feel right about this. I don't know. But maybe that's just me. It probably is just me. But, <laughs> I mean, look, I'm a human. I'm human too, you guys, okay? And I am a part of this whole process, just like the rest of you. So, I'm doing my best to keep my ego out of it, to keep my emotions out of it. But it's kind of hard. <laughs> I do want to go a little bit deeper here with this. Because technically, this I guess this should be a good thing, right? You have the Ten of Pentacles and you have the Ten of Cups with the Chariot. So what it feels like here is someone is moving towards this. Someone is getting alignment, getting in alignment with it. But then you still have this Seven of Swords energy. It's this. It's this Seven of Swords energy that's bothering me here. I, I can't really tell you what it is about it that's bothering me other than I'm being triggered by it and my ego is flaring. But I feel like, I feel like it's more than that. I feel like there's some sort of deception that's going on here. As if someone is like leading you to believe that, oh no, this isn't really the case and I don't really want this, when in reality, they do. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more. Just remember that the Ten of Pentacles was at the bottom of the deck. So I feel like this is a lesson learned, a cycle of completion. But also, coupled with the Ten of Cups, it's like the physical embodiment. It's like everything that you want. The emotional fulfillment and the physical fulfillment. The overall energy is the Ten of Pentacles. There's a sense of perfectionism here. It's almost as if the, the emotions are in line, but because the physical situation is not in alignment or is not to this emperor's liking or decree, or because maybe this emperor energy can't control what the physical looks like completely to the extent that he may want to, there it is. 
he's going to lie and say, I don't really want this, or I'm going to make it seem like I don't want this, or I'm going to keep my feelings hidden from you. And let's look a little deeper here. Knight of Swords, Two of Swords, Ace of Cups, Nine of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, again with the Five of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Okay. All right. Let's talk about this. Um, there is a desire to communicate here. There is a desire to communicate, but there's there's a really aggressive energy, and I feel like what's going th coming th up with this, with this desire to communicate with the Knight of Swords, um, it's aggressive. It's like I want to talk to you, but also I have so much to say to you. This feels a little. This feels quite aggressive. It feels pretty angry. It's it also, it also. On behalf that now this is coming from the masculine side. It also feels like w wanting to fire back, shoot back, um, launch some sort of attack or something, because of the fact that something in in this relationship, there's there's in this situation, the masculine is feeling inadequate, is feeling weak, is fe is feeling left out, is feeling left out in the cold, is feeling less than, like they'll never be good enough, whatnot, whatever. But see, the problem here, masculine, is the fact that the feminine went through that already. But you see, that's why she's gotten here. Queen of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, and she's turned her back. Because throughout everything that you two went through together, she was the one that felt inadequate first. And I'm going to say it this way, because this absolutely is the case. There have been situations where you, masculine, have said and done things specifically to tear the feminine down, to make her, him or her, it doesn't matter. We're not talking, again, we're not talking gender, we're talking energy. To make the feminine feel less than, to make the feminine feel like she's not good enough, she's crazy, she's nuts, she's, she's psycho, she's clingy, she's needy. I mean, yeah, she was probably exhibiting a lot of that energy before. The neediness, the clinginess, the, the, the codependency and whatnot. And she was, in fact, taking her value or her worth from how you interacted with her, what you, how you how you saw her, how you, what you thought of her, what you said about her. But then she woke up and she was like, wait a second. My worth comes from within. You don't get to define my worth for me. And thus here she is. Queen of Pentacles, steady, firm, grounded, knowing her worth and not willing to accept anything less, which is putting her in, I guess you can say the power play position, because now she can get whatever she wants because she knows she's worthy of it. But here you are, masculine. It seems having a little bit of a temper tantrum, right? Because now the shoe is on the other foot. The tables have turned. So you want to talk. And sure, there is love here. But you have to find your own worth, masculine. You have to be the one to fill this cup for yourself. Ace of Cups. And yes, this is the love that you have for the feminine. I get it. But you're too wrapped up in feelings of inadequacy. Five of Pentacles. And you have to, and, and so already, okay, so fine. So it's like, all right, fine. Well, I'll get that validation from someone else. You're missing the point, masculine. That validation does not come from external circumstances. Well, it, it, is, it, it, is, it would behoove you to not allow that to come from external circumstances because you're constantly just going to be chasing that validation. You need to find that validation from within. You're only setting yourself up for failure 
if you, if you require it to come from external circumstances. And I bet you, I bet you anything, masculine, the more you try and find that validation from external circumstances, the more and more it's going to dry up. The more and more the universe is going to take it from you until you learn to validate your own self. That, that is the lesson that you're needing to learn right here, right now. Ten of pentacles, nine of wands, ace of cups. That is what you need to be persevering towards. Loving yourself, validating yourself. See, now, here's the other thing that I'm already picking up on for you guys. I'm, I'm kind of, I guess I'm in your head now because I can, I, can, I can feel what you're thinking or I'm picking up on what you're thinking. It's like, oh shit, now I lost it. Um, but it was in, in terms of having this validation in the external it just feels like there's spite, and now, I've, and now I, I was talking too much and I lost it, but okay. It feels like spite, to be quite honest, masculine. It feels like you are looking for every other way to, to, to validate yourself externally, to, to prove to the feminine that she's wrong about you in some way. But I just heard, my intuition is correct, and that came from the feminine. I see right through you, she says. I know what it is you're going through, but I can't help you. <laughs> you have to validate yourself. There's something that keeps, that's like right on the tip of my tongue. There's something that I'm picking up on, but it's not, it's not fully coming through. So I'm just going to move forward and I'm going to get into the feminine's energy here now. Okay, so I'm going to use a different deck here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right. I was just thinking about, you know, what I was picking up on that I meant to say, but then I lost it immediately, but it doesn't matter. All right, for the feminine, let's look at this, this queen of pentacles and this nine of cups. One last shuffle here. Queen of Pentacles, Nine of Cups. Interesting. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. So, um... All right, so the King of Pentacles has come out. <laughs> look, 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 look. Whomever is in the Queen of Pentacles energy is going, is going to align with a king. Period. Period. I don't, I'm... I want to look at the overall energy at the bottom of the deck, but before I do that, I want to show you guys this. This. This, this queen of pentacles is going to align with a king of pentacles, regardless of what you have to say. You cannot stop this. Why? Because she has set herself up to receive exactly what it is she knows she is worthy of. You cannot stop this. You have the ace of swords the Six of Wands, and the Three of Cups. A happy union is going to happen. This could be a reconciliation. And also, also, with this Temperance card here that has, fa that has fallen out on the Seven of Swords, on the masculine side, this is speaking to patience. And maybe it's that I was picking up on the frustration of all the other feminines around here too. Because this is reminding me of a moment that I had when I was still in um, 
when I was still in an environment where I was constantly crossing paths with this person, okay? This person that I'm under the impression I've been guided to believe or I'm constantly being told because they just said it again. Yes, he's still your twin. Okay, fine. But there was a moment where I was in this space. I was actually working. I was doing my thing and he came around and as soon as he walked in the door, I heard very loud and clear, be patient with him. Okay, I accepted that at the time, but then a whole shitload of shit hit the fan. And ever since the last time I saw him, I have been so energetically opposed, so resistant to ever crossing paths with him again. And the only reason I'm saying this, you guys, is I'm trying to, I'm trying to let you know, like, the emotions are real and raw, okay? I may be someone that's able to really connect with the collective and channel these messages for you, but I am still human. I am not perfect. And I am struggling with this just like the rest of you, okay? But this, the fact that temperance has fallen out on this seven of swords is taking me back to that moment where I heard, please be patient with him. Look, I can be patient. We can be patient. But that does not, that does not mean we are going to accept crumbs because we are sitting in this place here queen of pentacles knowing our worth sitting and maintaining our integrity and the more and, and and maybe this is just from yeah all right this is from an egoic point of view but the way i see it right now the more someone sits in this deceptive energy the less and less i can trust them period and look i get it i personally understand why Many of the masculines, why I understand why the masculine collective is dealing, facing, with, with, facing whatever they're facing. I faced it too, but I faced it from the feminine side. I faced it from the feminine side being, being a physical man, but an actual feminine energy or a dominant feminine energy. Think about that. I get it, but that doesn't mean I have to, I have to allow that type of energy into my life. Okay? Now, the other thing that this temperance card is saying with the seven of swords here is the feminine saying directly to the masculine, you have got to balance this out. You've got to balance this out. You've got to figure this out. At the bottom of the deck here is the six of pentacles. Reciprocity. Not accepting anything less than what we deserve getting exactly what it is that we deserve or that she deserves the feminine which is a, someone i mean you can't you cannot you cannot make this shit up guys you can't okay king of pentacles the king to match her queen period okay fine you see how the masculine has the five of pentacles here? Whereas the feminine in their overall energy, whereas the feminine has the six of pentacles. You see that? All right. Okay. I'm going to move forward. We're going to get spirits take here. And then we're going to get our closing oracle guidance. Okay, they say one last shuffle. So we're gonna give this, whoa, no flyers, please. Even though, yes, it's the moon. All right, I see it's the moon, okay. Dark night of the soul time, all right, fine. <laughs> but no flyers, please. Last one, all right. Let's get Spirit's take on this here, guys. Okay. Woo! Two of swords. Okay, well, the spirit wants us to come together. Three of cups, and by us, I mean collectively. Spirit, it, what, what I'm getting from this three of cups, it's like 
We gotta be working together. Two of Swords, Ace of Pentacles, Five of Cups. Oh, look, there's the King of Pentacles again, but with the Five of Wands. So, okay, the other thing that I was picking up on with this is that another reason why the feminine really needs to be patient is because... It could very well be this past individual that ultimately ends up lining up with this king of pentacles energy, lining up to be the king to her queen, all right? But what spirit is saying through this is right now, okay, what spirit is saying with this is the masculine, this king of pentacles wants to make some sort of offer, but is indecisive, feels blocked, feels like he can't, doesn't know how to do it doesn't even know if he should. Do you see how this Ace of Pentacles is sandwiched in between the Two of Swords and the Five of Cups? And then do you see how the King of Pentacles is sandwiched in between the Five of Cups and the Five of Wands? I'm hearing union will happen, reunion will happen. The masculine right now is in an energy of coming to terms with the sense of inadequacy. I'm hearing self-doubt, fear, not feeling good enough, feeling like he can't change, well, you can't change the past, but feeling like the past has completely destroyed any chances of the future, potentially. I don't know, maybe, I don't know. What I'm hearing is, what, what, what I'm hearing is you have to give him time and space to grow. Again, the masculine could be a woman or it could be a man, it doesn't matter. You have to give him the time and the space to grow. Basically, what Spirit is saying here is Spirit is confirming the fact that, yes, there is an offer that wants to be made, a solid and a tangible offer, but look at all the things in between. Two of Swords, Five of Cups, Five of Wands. Ah, the Three of Cups as the overall energy. I get it. The Three of Cups as the overall energy is speaking to this. You see those three cups that have spilled over? That's the third party. Now, the third party doesn't have to be a romantic partner. The third party could be family, friends, colleagues, anything. Third parties are the individuals that are sticking their nose, that are getting involved in the situation or that have, have some sort of influence on the situation. Okay. Yeah. Also, the three of cups is representing this person's need or desire or reliance upon how other people see them in order for you two to really come together this person has to let go of how they're seen or perceived by others and focus on the relationship at hand that they want anyway mm. I just heard it's the masculine's turn to struggle through this energetically. It is the masculine's turn to face this energy because the feminine faced it already. Okay. This is pretty heavy, <laughs> but let's get your closing oracle guidance here. We're going to use the crystal mandala deck today. All right, here we go. Closing message. Wow. We have two, so I'm going to read both of them. So this message is going to go well over an hour, I'm assuming, but... Uh, what did I do with the book? We have two cards. We have the first card, 
Card number one, Archangel Metatron and Clear Quartz, Power. And then we also have card number 44, uh, <sighs> Goddess, Goddess Bastet and Cat's Eye, Sacred Pleasure. Ooh, the sun is coming out. It's okay. I'm just going to leave it that way. It's going to kind of screw up the lighting a little bit for a little while, but it's just peeking through the clouds a little bit. So this is a good thing, guys. The sun is... The sun is going to shine on this. We promise. All right. Card number one, power. Together we bring you the gift of power. Spiritual power enables you to trust in your higher guidance, no matter what appears to be happening in your life. Psychological and emotional power enables you to transform through evolving your belief systems and processing your emotions through which you gain wisdom. Physical power gives you the strength to take action on the matters that serve your life path. This gift of power is safe for you to receive because you will use it to fulfill your divine destiny, which in turn supports all beings. Okay. And then finally we have card number 44. And it's interesting because this card, number 144, is a master angel number. Number two... Um, I watched a reading recently in which cats were said to be a sign, and this is cat's eye. <laughs> so that's cool. I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. Sacred pleasure. We bring you the empowerment of sacred pleasure. It is said that the spirit had to be enticed into the body to give up its complete freedom and willingly take on an experience of limitation that could lead to divine growth. It needed to deal, it needed the deal to be sweetened. So music was created, music that could only be felt and expressed through the body. Spirit jumped in like a flash and life was created. There is more life that can be cre created in and in you and your world. Although there are undoubtedly struggles as a natural part of opening up to more life, there is divine sweetness too. That is the gift of sacred pleasure. This is the pleasure that gives you joy in your aliveness. It is innocent, sensual, and life-affirming. It is time to, for you to receive more of this. This oracle says it's time to put a little sugar in your bowl. Ouch. Um, I'm going to read this. Pleasure and pain are a part of the dance of life. You can enjoy pleasure without fearing you'll become addicted to it and no longer be able to bear your pain. In fact, knowing you have access to genuine, natural pleasure can be a way to manage pain more effectively. It might seem strange, but there can be an addiction to pain just as much as an addiction to pleasure, perhaps even more so considering the state of most people's lives these days. Pain has its rightful place in life, but pleasure does too. For many people, there is actually pain that arises when they first learn how to feel genuine pleasure. Confusion, shame, guilt, and fear of being lazy can enter the mind and cause tension in the body, making it difficult to let go and be in, a, be in an experience of, of enjoyment. Pleasure is a form of release. It's about surrender and letting go into the moment. When there is yearning for pleasure, whether it be the healthy conscious expression of playfulness or the addictive craving for an artificial high, the deeper part of you is letting you know you've wounded yourself up. I'm sorry. Yeah, you've wound yourself up too tight. You are trying to control yourself rather than learn to identify and meet your needs in a healthy way. So what I feel like that is saying here is there needs to be a greater sense of pleasure. People need to allow themselves to be happy. People need to allow themselves to do the things and express themselves in the way that's actually going to make you happy instead of trying to conform to what other people say happiness comes from or whatever. Okay. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. This was a little bit of a tough reading. But I hope you guys have a really, really, really excellent day. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow. And also, I look forward to seeing you later for happy hour. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Take care. Mwah. Bye.